Hello everybody, a very warm welcome to Zandvoort in Holland. The tension is beginning to build, expectation is beginning to rise because the penultimate event of the season in the ADAC GT Masters Championship is upon us. We've had one race already this weekend and that was a very interesting, lively and at times controversial race uh, yesterday. This is race two and after this, there'll be just one more weekend to go in the championship in a few weeks time at the beginning of October as they head back into Germany and to Hockenheim. We have an eclectic grid of some fantastic GT cars, all of them which deliver somewhere between 550 brake horsepower and 650 brake horsepower. We have some top European drivers as well as a number of drivers from outside of Europe, uh, namely the reigning champion Calvin van der Linde and the uh, Sirocco Cup champion from last year, Jordan Lee Pepper, who are also involved in the championship. There's some quick young drivers and there's um, some uh, of the statesmen of the sport in here as well, the likes of Uwe Alsen, DTM uh, superstar in times gone by, and multiple DTM champion Bernd Schneider, also another famous name on the grid, as well as Claudia Hertgen, who races with Uwe Alsen. So this is a race in which the championship could be decided. So after taking their third win of the season yesterday, Sebastian Ash and Luca Ludwig in the team Zack Speed Mercedes uh, extended their points advantage from 23 up to 48 points, 48 points clear of Klaus Backler, who is one of the drivers in the GWIT Schultz Motorsport Porsche, uh, which was leading the race yesterday after claiming pole position. Uh, there was an incident involving one of the Corvettes that brought out the safety car. And upon the restart, there was a collision on that run into turn one that you can see at the top of the picture there at Tarzan. Uh, the Porsche was being driven at the time by Martin Raginger, the Austrian driver, who's doing a great job. Uh, Thomas Enger had a great restart in the writer engineering Lamborghini and had a luck up the inside of him. Uh, and right behind the pair of them were the championship leaders uh, in the guise of Sebastian Ash, who was driving the Zack Speed Mercedes at the time. The three of them went into the corner, only two of them came out of the corner because the Porsche uh, received contact and was sent into the gravel trap. And that is the car, as I say, which had been closing in that team on the championship leaders. Uh, later, Thomas Enger uh, put up uh, a message to say that that was not the uh, the race they'd been looking for and hoping for. And uh, on the restart, he was saying that he received a hit from behind from the Mercedes that sent him into the Porsche. It was uh, relatively gentle uh, hit. Uh, so, so the three of them going for the same corner. Uh, there was no penalty taken against anybody, but it was enough to uh, send the Lamborghini just into the Porsche, which was on the outside line with less grip, less room for error, and into the gravel he went. So, having been closing the gap in the championship, Klaus Backler uh, didn't score any points yesterday. They did get back up to 11th, and they almost nicked a point for 10th at the line, but they didn't uh, score any points. So, 48 points is the difference between the top two in the championship. After today's race, there'll only be another 50 points available. So, they could wrap it up here, but they're back on ninth on the grid. And there is a, another car and team, Dominic Bauman is the driver for the first stint, that have still a mathematical chance of winning the championship. They're third in the standings, but the tyres went off big style on that BMW in yesterday's race. Had a great start to the race, but Dominic Bauman lost uh, four places in the last few laps of the race with uh, extreme tyre degradation, which is an issue here at this circuit. Best starting grid of the season for the Christian Abd Racing Audi car number three. Christa Jons is going to start it. He qualified it in this position in the second part of qualifying on Friday evening. And uh, it's the first time they've been on the front row of the grid this year. Their previous best was a fifth place on the grid at Saxon Ring last time out. At the very beginning of the season, they qualified sixth at Oschersleben. But more often than not, that white number three Audi has been at the uh, back of the grid. And grabbed a quick word with Christian this morning, and he was saying that uh, absolutely their problem has been qualifying. It's what's uh, really been letting them down. So they've sorted that out, made some tweaks to the car, and let's see how they can get on. But Christian's his teammate, he's one of the amateur drivers, one of the gentleman drivers, and he's a little bit nervous about how high up the order he's going to be when he gets in the car, Andreas Weishaupt. So they're on the formation, that's going to be a rolling start. Let me quickly give you the grid for this one. On pole position, car number eight in the BMW Team Schubert car, Dominic Bauman will start this one. 
He's on pole. He was only seven thousandths of a second quicker than Chris De Jong's in the number three Christian Abs Racing Audi. And only 41 thousandths of a second away from pole position was the number 88 Writer Engineering Lamborghini, which is driven by uh, Nick Katzberg, the Dutch driver who got the Spa 24 Hours uh, earlier this year. And more about him in a moment, but he was very quick yesterday. And fourth on the grid, Mark Basseng, the former GT1 world champion, who had a good race yesterday to get onto the podium. And in qualifying, he, in the number 24 Audi, he was only 62 thousandths of a second away from pole. So 62 thousandths of a second, just over half a tenth of a second between the top four in qualifying. Fifth on the grid, Jan van Lagen, who went both the races here last year. The Dutchman for the other writer engineering Lamborghini Gallardo. Car number 25 is going to be starting fifth on the grid. And then sixth on the grid, Klaus Backler in the Porsche. A bit disappointed with this performance in qualifying. Very disappointed with the lack of points scored yesterday. They're not out of it. Uh, Klaus didn't want to really comment on the race yesterday. He said we've still got a mathematical chance, but it would take a miracle now. It's all very disappointing, the whole story but I have nothing to lose. And as has been pointed out by uh, Sebastian Ash, and in particular by his teammate, Luca Ludwig, they're not thinking that they've won the title yet because they could easily, they're only ninth on the grid in the number 21 Mercedes. They could e easily lose 20 or 25 points and it could be back down to the wire again, going into the final two rounds. So Nick Katzberg, watch for him there in the number 88 Lamborghini. He enjoyed himself yesterday. What a race, he said. He had a great battle with Bert Schneider and Uwe Altsen. Unfortunately, though, he said, I hit one, uh, hit Uwe and got uh, a drive through penalty, which he did. Uwe Altsen, very disappointed in a great battle for seventh place. So Katzberg was very quick yesterday when he got in the car, but a bit overzealous and a little bit of contact with Uwe Altsen as he tried to get past him. We have a quick word with Uwe Altsen's teammate, Claudia Hertgen, this morning. She said that's been the story of the races, really, in recent times. We keep getting uh, hit in the, the final stages. As a result, Claudia dropped from fifth to sixth in the point standings yesterday. So a very important race for the championship. It's a one-hour race, and we're about to get underway here at Zandvoort as the lights go out, and they thunder towards stars out for the first time. It's a very good start for Bauman in the black and red BMW, and the Lamborghini is going to go with him there into second place of Nick Katzberg. So he makes a decent start as well. Mr. Jons has dropped back in the Audi to fourth place, I think. So it looks like the two Lamborghinis are second and third. And you've got Mark Basseng in the orange number 24 Audi trying to get in the mix as well. He's on the outside and I think he'll have to concede the position and a good start as well for the yellow Porsche. Championship contenders brushing the wall. There is the other BMW. That's Uwe Olsen clipping the wall and damage and problems already for the number 19 car here. It's got damage to the right side of the car. It brushed the wall. I think that's putting work rubbing on the tires and that might already have put pay to a good result. They had uh, problems in qualifying, which is why they started towards the back of the field and that has been their downfall. And uh, yes, it's the right wheel, right front wheel that's been uh, damaged. So uh, he's going to try and limp back to the pits, but he's got most of the lap to try and do that. He's only up at Schleibach. He's only halfway around the lap. Claudia Hurtgen, uh, well, walks away disconsolately. It has not been a good few weekends for that team, despite having good pace. So at the head of the field is the pole position driver, Dominic Bauman. That leads the way here, but he's not exactly romping clear of the Lamborghini of Nick Katzberg. Nick, who shares the car with the 2010 GT champion, Albert von Turn and Taxis, who's going to be, uh, with all due respect, probably not as quick as Nick Katzberg. So Nick would like to get to the head of the field and create a gap, if he can, to try and give him a buffer to his teammate. Through they come. Third place, a good start as well for the... Other Lamborghini, wasn't it? Yep, Van Nagen from fifth on the grid. He finds himself up into third place at the end of the first lap of the race. That car, having been in the lead and in the lead battle at one point, the number 25 Lamborghini, then was one of several teams to uh, misjudge their pit stops. You have to stop for 65 seconds as a minimum time, and they just missed that. They were a little bit too quick, so they received a stop-go penalty and uh, then dropped down the order quite, quite heavily as a result of that, so didn't score any points. And here we see Nick Katzberg getting very, very close to the tail of the race leader as they charge their way up through Slotomaker and up and then down the hill into Schleibach. Climb here, absolutely flat out through here. Fantastic vantage point to watch the cars. These GTs doing something like 200 kilometers an hour over the brow they come, and then it's quite steeply downhill into the braking zone for this corner at Schleibach. 
glimpse of the number 16 Audi there, which uh, came in a podium position yesterday. Rahul Frey and Philip Guypel as into the pits comes Uwe Alsen. And big damage. To, it's got a puncture as well. It's damage to the front suspension. And, well, I'll be surprised if it goes back out, to be honest. It's certainly not going to get any kind of result now. So you look back from the race leader's car at uh, Nick Katzberg here. That's driver. Started his career in single-seaters. Was a Dutch and Benelux Formula Ford champion back in uh, 2008. And Jap van Lagen, another very quick Dutch driver, the ex-Porsche Super Cup racer. Runner-up in this championship last year, pushing hard. And he's got a very quick teammate in the guise of Thomas Enger as well, with all of his GT and 24-hour racing experience. So fantastic stuff. There's Albert von Turner, Texas, enjoying himself, enjoying the racing. And enjoy the fact that Nick Kat Katzberg has got that car in second place. One thing we do need to mention is that that car is a guest car this weekend, so not viable for points. We look back here, a contact for one of the Corvettes. Nearly taking out the onboard camera there. That's the number 66 Corvette, which had a very good race from a lowly grid position yesterday. Got a, a decent result in the end, coming home in seventh place. Uh, that's one of the Callaway competition cars. It is currently running in ninth place. Having started at the back of the grid, they didn't go out at all for the second part of qualifying, so that's had to start dead last. And, yeah, just making contact there. I think that is the back of the 21 Mercedes, the championship leading car. Yes, it is. There they are. So it's the number 21 car, which got a hit, but it survived. Yesterday, the car's only real drama, apart from that incident at Turn 1, uh, was in the second half of the race, when Luca Ludwig managed to run over a, a pigeon which had flown onto the circuit. Luckily... Uh, the car was undamaged. It wasn't such a good story, I'm afraid, for the pigeon. We didn't get to see much more of the race after that. Let's put it that way. So, number 80 leads the race. It's the Schubert BMW from pole position, Dominic Bauman. He's got a quick teammate as well to get into that car in the guise of Jens Klingman. Bentley, uh, there's Sebastian Ash, championship leader, waiting to get in the car. And there's his teammate now on board with Luca Ludwig. They don't need to necessarily go for a podium in this race. They have a big, big advantage in the championship, so just to try and pick up some points here. After that disappointing qualifying, it's made one place up so far. It's gone from ninth on the grid up to eighth position, but it's the number 80 car of Bauman that leads the way after the first few laps of the race. Number 88, uh, the guest car of... Oh, another bit of contact there on the way to Tarzan. Not liking this at all. After a pretty easy run yesterday when he got into the car for the second half of the race, just drove away at the front, but not liking this at all today. Will be Luca Ludwig here. It's a couple of little taps he's had there from the 66 car, which in this phase of the race is being driven by Daniel Karlwitz, who was mega quick yesterday to come charging through the field and uh, get some good points. And uh, damage to the one of the uh, Bentleys there. And uh, had some contact. One of the Bentleys yesterday getting a similar bit of damage in the first lap of the race. In fact, in the first couple of corners. So it's the number seven car with uh, some dramas there. And that's Tom Dillman that's driving it. Tom was on for third place yesterday uh, until the very last lap of the race. And he was another one that struggled with the tyres and was a bit of a sitting duck. So Tom, who's only driven that car twice and only once in this championship, that was yesterday, driven it previously in the Blanc Pond series. Uh, he uh, disappointingly dropped out of fourth place on the last lap of the race, overtaken by Philip Geipel, Rahel Frey's teammate in the number 16 Audi. So they got their second podium of the season. Tom Dillman and his teammate Lucas Stoltz just missed out on third place on that very final lap of the race. As I say, they weren't the only ones to struggle with the tyres late on. They cannot change tyres during the course of the race unless they get damaged tyres or well, conditions change. And they really have to nurse the tyres. So the, the, the common story with everybody at the end of the race was how, how much they'd had to look after and nurse the tyres. Rahel Frey in her first stint where she had to defend from the car, which now leads the race quite strongly. She said she really, really nursed the tyres, and that paid dividends for the team as then Philip Geipel was able to go quickly towards the end of the race and steal that third position. But others, including Mark uh, Basseng, who finished in second place yesterday in the MS Racing Audi, the number 24 car, he said uh, it was just a nightmare for them at the end of the race. Almost no rubber left on the tyres when he came into the pits. Uh, a drive-through penalty for the number 100 Audi, who just did a shot of that, uh, for contact out on the circuit. So... That's the teammate to Mark Basseng, as we see a replay at the start. Ned Sandstrom, the Swedish driver, who went well yesterday, but he's got a drive-through penalty. Look at the BMW there. Uwe Altsen tried to defend his position there from the fast-starting Daniel Karlovitz. 
four-time champion of ADAC GT Masters. The Callaway Competition car, Callaway Competition. One of the most winning teams in this championship with 21 wins since the championship started back in 2007. The other most winning team is Writer Engineering, who have one of their Lamborghinis in second place and another in third at the moment. And that's the reaction from Claudia Hurtgen, the Dewey Altson. Let's have a look. Oh, it was, he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Bit of a chain effect there. The Bentley was nerfed wide. The number eight Bentley, that's why it's uh, got delayed. And then that went into Uwe Altson. And that was, it was the Audi. So that's what that penalty is for. So it was the number 100 Audi that went into the Bentley that in turn knocked the Bentley into Uwe Altson and into the pit wall he went and out of the race they went with damage. So that's the reason that Ed Sandstrom picked up that penalty and Uwe then resting with the car, the former DTM. Privateer champion trying to get the car back and taking a feral bit of gravel back onto the circuit with him. So dramatic stuff. Bauman leads the race, but as to be expected given what we saw in qualifying, he's not getting away from the two Lamborghinis. And then in fourth place, Krista Jong's doing a good job. Into Servitz pit stop then comes the 100 car and another one that's going to serve a pit stop penalty is going to be the Callaway competition car. Number 66, Daniel Karvitz. That comes in uh, as well. Presumably that was the contact that we've been seeing every now and again with the back of the number 21 Mercedes. So it gets a five second stop go penalty as well. After a great start from the back of the grid up to ninth place, Kalvitz is going to tumble all the way back down the order when he has to serve that penalty. And for those of you new to GT Masters racing, it's a one hour race and there's a one mandatory pit stop that has to be served between 25 and 35 minutes in the race during which there'll be only driver changes, no refueling, no fresh tyres on the car. So Mark Basseng is in fifth place, sixth position. We've got the number 36 Klaus Battler Porsche. There it is, the bright yellow car. And seventh is Calvin van der Linde, number one. And uh, having taken their first win of the season, the defending champions, Christian Abt and Kelvin Linde, at Saxon ring last time out. It looked pretty quick in qualifying. In fact, Kelvin reckoned he was on a lap quick enough to get pole position for this race in the second part of qualifying on Friday but he was held up and he only ended up in seventh place in the end he was 0.3 of a second away from pole position so he could have been right up there uh, they were another team that looked like they might score good points yesterday and then received a stop go self-inflicted they went underneath the minimum pit stop time and then later on the car the number one car retired with a broken tow link so it's back to the same old story for uh, Kelvin. He's had a really disappointing defence to his championship, having won the title at the first time of asking last year, alongside the very experienced uh, Rene Rast. Jordan Lee Pepper is another South African that has come up through the BW Sirocco Cup, which is now uh, a defunct championship, but he won that championship last year. Kelvin van der Linde won it the year before. Jordan is driving alongside the ultra-experienced Nicky Tim in another Christian Amp racing Audi and they had one of their best results yesterday with a fifth place finish. Speaking to Jordan Lee Pepper this morning, he was saying that uh, the biggest thing for him to get used to has been all of the aerodynamic uh, grit that you get from these cars. Obviously a lot, lot quicker, a very different beast to what he's been driving in Sirocco Cup, but he's doing a good job. They've had a fourth, a couple of fifths. They had some technical problems at the start of the season, which Jordan was saying cost them a lot of running and that then cost him a lot of time in the car. But he says he learned something every single session from Nicky Tim, which is why the pair of them have been put together in the car. That one, though, is down in 16th place at the moment because it had uh, problems in qualifying, technical dramas in qualifying, and was 18th on the grid. You're looking back at the number three car of Krista Johns. That's the car, one of the cars that uh, is legible for the gentleman's trophy. If you have one gentleman driver in your car, you're liable for the gentleman's trophy. There are only three left because we lost at the start of the weekend after a crash in free practice. The number 22 MRS GT Racing Nissan, Florian Schultz crashed, he was OK, but the car was out for the rest of the weekend. And yesterday, it was that number three car which took ninth place overall and won the gentleman's trophy with Rima Lips and uh, Sven Barth taking 12th place and second in the class. So at the head of the field, the lap times almost identical between the top two. Dominic Bauman, a 1 minute 40.821. The number 88 Lamborghini of Katzberg, 1 minute 40.873. So the gap remains pretty tight. There you can see how many uh, places people have gained or lost. The one in ninth is the one that's gained the most places, but it's uh, 
And to serve a stop go penalty shortly, we're hearing that's Daniel Karlwitz. So, and the one that, uh, at the head of the field, the one that made the most time was Jatman Lagen. He went from fifth up to second place with a very good start. Christian's just dropping back a little bit from that front row qualified position. Still in a good place here. Still very much on course for the gentleman's trophy victory. So Bath is his nearest rival in that respect, and he's back in 10th place with down in 14th place, the number 23 car of Mark Gassner, the sole remaining Nissan. Kelvin van der Linde and the number one Audi, the defending champion, currently in seventh place. But saying to me earlier on in the weekend that it's very difficult to overtake here at Zandvoort if you've got somebody who's on a similar pace to you. That's why they put everything into qualifying rather than running heavy loads in uh, free practice and race loads. But that didn't work because uh, he wasn't able to use his best lap to uh, get a good grid position. So he's there in seventh place at the moment. There is the championship leading car, Luca Ludwig getting another tap, and it's another tap from the 66 Corvette, which has already had a warning for all of this, and hasn't yet, I don't think, been into serve its penalty. So Daniel Karlwitz in, in real uh, trouble up here, I think, with the officials if he carries on like this, because he's, again, made some contact there and made the championship leader sweat a little bit. Luca Ludwig, in the end, lets him go which is probably a good idea, because the Corvette's going to have to come in anyway. Well, that was a fairly hefty bit of contact there. Out of the way, he says, I'm coming through. But the only place he's going is into the pits at the moment. And sure enough, an incident between cars number 21 and 66 is under investigation. It's not really the sort of thing you want to do when you've already received a penalty for contact. So 66, let's see what happens with that one. And he still hasn't been in to serve the penalty yet, which I think he should have probably done by now. The very latest on this lap, I would have thought. Oh, oh, it's the Nissan on the way into the gravel trap there. Rear wheel spinning, trying to get the power down on this Nissan and get it back out of the gravel trap. The 23 car driven at this stage of the race by Florian Strauss, the German driver, but Florian is stuck there and he couldn't get the 3.8 litre V6 engine to use any of its power, really, because the tyres were just spinning up on the gravel trap there. So here we see Luca Ludwig going down the inside of the Corvette. Could do without all this hassle, really. And back out of the Corvette he goes. And I wonder if that's a case of the driver there, Daniel Karlwitz, giving the place back to try and stay out of trouble. The incident is up at turn nine. That's where the incident with the uh, Nissan is. But just yellow flags at the moment, no sign of a safety car coming out just yet. So, number 80, Dominic Bowman leads the way. But he's been caught, no doubt about it, by Nick Katzberg in the Writer Engineering Lamborghini. And then third, Jack van Lagen. And here's a replay of the Nissan going off. Quite a bit of runoff there. Oh, the safety car is coming out now. Quite a bit of runoff there and gravel. And he actually just about kept it out of the barriers. But, unfortunately, he couldn't, keep it. He couldn't get it back out of the gravel. So that's up at turn nine, the right-hander, just after the exit to Masters Corner. It was a brave effort, wasn't it, to try and keep it going, keep his foot down. But here you see the rear tyres just beginning to lose grip, lose grip, lose grip, and it starts to dig in. And that's it then, buried out of the, uh, out of the action. Damage to the front of that car as well, the front right, which would have been from something earlier, not from his, uh, his off. And there you can see, you can have all the power in the world, but if you've got no grip, it's a waste of time. So that has brought the safety car out, and it was when the safety car came out yesterday, of course, that we had all the dramas on the restart with the top three uh, all huddling together, coming together, and the number 36 Porsche, the Schultz Motorsport car, driven by Martin Ragginger, was the one that came off worst and ended up scoring no points. So one or two drivers in trouble yesterday. Sven Barth as well in the number 13 RWT racing Corvette. He received a 2,000 euro fine at the end of the race yesterday for making contact with the Porsche. It wasn't the Porsche's team's day yesterday, was it? Uh, that was after the, after the flag on the slowing down lap. So he had a different opinion, but the steward said it was his fault, so he had to pay a 2,000 euro fine. We also had a 1,000 euro fine for a driver that won this race a couple of years ago. 
uh, another of the Corvette drivers, Diego Alessi, the Italian. He was the one that caused the safety car yesterday and uh, then didn't obey the instructions of marshals, apparently, which is why he um, received a 1,000 euro penalty. Stint to Jordan Lee Pepper there, Nicky Tim up to 14th place now, doing the first stint in the number two Audi. Good news, this, of course, for the likes of Edward Sandstrom, who's been in the pits to serve a stop-go penalty. Well, he's still at the back of the field, but he is now on the tail of everybody else, so that has helped them out a little bit. It will also help out the number 66 car. Still not sure he's been in yet to serve its penalty. The Corvette. Safety car is coming in on this lap. So, now we're looking for the championship. The race leaders, who are third in the championship, Bauman and Klingman, the BMW, they need to make sure that they beat the Mercedes pairing by six points or more to have any chance of staying in touch in the championship going into the last weekend of the season. If the Mercedes uh, finishes three points ahead of the Porsche, then they will wrap up the championship because they have a 51 point lead and there's only 50 points left up for grabs. Okay, getting ready for the restart in a moment. The championship leaders are two places behind the Porsche. So if it stands like this, and there's a long way to go, I admit, but if it stands like this, we will have the championship going down to the last weekend of the season, which has happened every time since the championship started. Bit of weaving around to get some heat into the tyres as he restarts the race here then from uh, Dominic Bauman. He leads the charge down into the first turn. The driver that finished fifth in last year's championship leads the way once again. Nick Katzberg hanging on to him in second place. Jack van Lagen third, no real changes. So less dramatic restart than we had yesterday. Just over five minutes away from the pit window opening. In fourth place, Christa Jons looking for that team's best result of the season. Still carrying damage is the number seven Bentley, Tom Dillman. But it doesn't seem to be slowing the car down. He's out of the points at the moment, though in 12th position, the French driver, the XGP2 and GP3 racer. Got on board there with Jap van Lagen, last year's uh, championship runner up here in the number 25 machine. Won many, many things in many types of car. Porsche Super Cup racer was a European McGann Trophy champion a number of years ago. Single seaters, he was a Formula 4 champion, the Benelux Formula 4 champion. He's also raced in Super Liga, Blanc Pun Endurance, the ALMS. Hugely, hugely experienced driver, Jack Van Lagen. And with equally impressive Thomas uh, Enger to get into the car. That's sitting nicely in third place there. Looking good for Lamborghini. Ahead of them, of course, their teammates. That's a car in second place, which will not score points as well. So we need to factor that into our reckonings when we look at the championship a bit later on in the race. Keep an eye on that yellow Porsche as well. Klaus Backler really wants to get up onto the podium if he can to keep this championship hopes alive, even though they're becoming slender. The team is not going to give up. Team principal Christen, Christian Schutz at Schutz Motorsport said that we've got to, to look ahead now. In theory, there's still 75 points up for grabs. Nothing's been decided, and we're not going to give up until it's over. There is the Mercedes, still with the 66 machine behind it. And still, you know, hasn't been in to serve this penalty, but no other action seems to have been taken. So whether it's been disputed by the team and they've rescinded it, I'm not sure, but it's certainly still pounding around there in ninth place. Back ahead now, the Mercedes. Last time we saw them, they switched around again, haven't they? But having a real battle here. The Callaway competition car driven by Daniel Karvitz from the back of the field after failing to take part in qualifying with a technical problem. The former GT3 champion Karvitz, who was the champion in this series with Diego Alesse two years ago in 2013. Five wins that season. He was driving the wheels off that Corvette, one of the more powerful cars in the championship, but performance success weights are used to equalise the cars. There's also weight added to driver pairings. If you have, for example, a couple of pro drivers in the car, you get extra weight added on to try and equalise things. That Corvette with its 6.1 litre V8 engine, a big heavy car, but a very powerful one. Here's Tom Dillman going shoulder to shoulder there with uh, the 42 car Bernschneider and uh, with uh, Nicky Tim, number two. So two 
tremendous drivers there, but Tom Dillman, who's less experienced than these types of cars, with a background really in single-seater racing, looks like GB2, GB3 and Formula 3, he's doing a very good job, and he keeps the Bentley ahead. Fourth place yesterday, the tyres went off, but he was very honest when I spoke to him this morning, Tom Dillman, he said, yeah, the tyres went off, but I, I felt I could have driven better on the last couple of laps, I could have defended my place a bit more, so he's quite hard on himself. The other Bentley is running at the back of the field at the moment and is about to be passed, I think, by the number 100 KFZ Tyler 24 Audi, which had that stop-go penalty. So Ed Sandstrom, uh, I think he's trying to get ahead and he might have done it when we see them come through next, but he's still towards the back of the field. Flying up then towards Shyback, down to fourth gear in a moment. Got another replay of that contact from a couple of laps ago. Corvette and Mercedes, or was that another one? I'm losing cat now, how many times the front of the Corvette has hit the back of the Mercedes? Through it goes. The number 13 car trying to get through as well there, the other Corvette. has been driven by Sven Barth, loves this circuit. And here's a replay of this little battle with the bits falling off the Bentley, but Tom Dillman still keeping his foot in here to stay ahead of Nicky Tim, the ex-Porsche Super Cup champion, the Danish driver with his shock of blonde hair, trying to fight up from the back of the field here, but stuck in the midfield at the moment, now in 13th place. Less than a minute until the pit window opens. Quite uh, mild here, but not warm, not hot. It's 20 degrees. Last time out at the Saxon ring, it was 35, and that will suit cars like the Porsche more, cars that are a bit heavier on their tyres. And in that number 36 Porsche, we have got a very quick driver in the guise of Martin Raginger, who was absolutely mega in qualifying on Friday to get in once the pit stops uh, happen. So don't rule that one out of a podium finish yet. And maybe something even more significant than that. Through they all come. You see how tight they all are. I know the safety car bunched them up, but they haven't really spread out before that. There's really very little to choose between these cars, these teams. We had the top 12 cars in qualifying on Friday, separated by less than a second. And as I said at the start of the show, less than half a tenth of a second between the top four. So it's going to be a tight race. It's going to mean that there's even more emphasis on what the teams do in the pit stops now. Try and get as close as they can to the 65-second uh, the minimum. That's 65 seconds from pit entry to pit exit, not 65 seconds stationary. And we'll try and keep an eye on that and see who gets close. But even if you're a tenth of a second under or something like that you will uh, be penalised and the amount that you're under is the amount that you get penalised by plus the stop go penalty which is really going to uh, really going to kill you and we saw I think four teams yesterday that received stop go penalties for being too quick during the pit stop window right here is the view back from the race leading car this team Schubert Motorsport have had three wins this season. They're third in the championship. They took a win at the Spa, a win at the Lausitz Ring, and in the last events before we came here to Holland, they were winners at the Saxon Ring as well. So they've had three wins. And into the pits comes the other team, which have had three wins and leads the championship. So Luca Ludwig bringing the championship leading car in now. Careful to stick to the speed limit. The Bentley coming in as well by the looks of things. So that's Tom Dillman and Sebastian Ash. He's getting ready to get on board. Only two members of the team can work on the car. The drivers have to help each other to get strapped in. And as I say, there's no changes in terms of tyres or fuel here. So Sebastian Ash, the GT Masters champion of 2012, in. That damage being fixed to the back of the Bentley, but it looks superficial. And uh, Tom Dillman is going to hand over to Lucas Stoltz, the 20-year-old from Kirschen in Germany. Ex-Porsche Carrera Cup racer, ex-F3 racer. So, gaffer tape going on. We should have time to get this done and still manage to do their stop within the 65 seconds. But pressure and stress on the teams now. They've been told to get on with it because they're losing time now. The car is being fired up. He'll work on it to the last millisecond. And the car, yeah, done a good job there because, look, they're still in time. They're still holding the car because they don't want it to go out yet. So, that was a great job by the team. Probably done it with about 10 seconds to spare. They got the uh, the job done. Great work by the team. Good stop as well, I think, by the Mercedes. 
So I've got the data on uh, times this weekend on the on the screens, but it's looked pretty good. And so out goes Sebastian Ash then. Looking to become the first ever driver to win two championships. There's his teammate, Luca Ludwig. I said to him yesterday after the race that uh, it was a good drive. He said, yeah, it was easy for me, really. I just had to, had to keep the car going at the front of the field. The only problem he, he had, really, was just keeping the concentration up. And you can see there from the hand gesticulation, I think he's pretty much referring to the fact that he was getting nerfed quite a few times for the Corvette there. But still, that Corvette hasn't been in. There's no information. We got the, the message to say five second stop go penalty. Then we, then we got a message to say, well, two messages to say that the uh, car was under investigation for contact. Uh, yes, then there was a message to say that they had to swap positions. So it was the case of the Corvette giving the place back to the Mercedes. Then he got him back again the, about a lap or two later. But in terms of that stop go penalty, I think that must have been rescinded. There's nothing to say it has been, but it would have been served by now, I think. Uh, so I can assume there is the number 66 car that the team have put in an appeal and he's, he's okay for the time being. So all things said, Daniel Carvitt is doing a good job here. It's been fairly aggressive, but when you're at the back of the grid, I suppose you've got to be really, in a sense. The 2013 champion pushing on now. And that uh, Corvette ahead of him is one of the gentleman class Corvettes. Remo Lips, the Czech driver. Had to miss the last round at the Saxon ring because he wasn't well. And so with five weeks out of the car, he was saying he's a bit rusty, really, and not quite up to speed. And uh, there goes the number two Audi to get past that Corvette. So it's Nicky Tim. Pit window open for another five minutes, but not many people have been in yet. One of the cars that has come in is Philip Geipel in the Audi, the number 16 Audi, which finished on the podium yesterday, the Yako racing car. Rahel Frey, the ex-DTM racer, is going to get into that one. Calvin van der Linde is bringing his Audi in from seventh place, and he'll be handing that one over to his less experienced teammate, Stefan Wackerbauer. So, Calvin, as I say, is the team leader at just 19 years of age, uh, because he's got that one more year's experience in these types of cars. Stefan Wackerbauer there. Improving technical problems for the team at the start of the year. There's a problem there. Back left wheel, isn't there, for the Corvette puncture, I think. And, yep, yeah, a puncture. So the Pirelli has uh, received some damage there, I suspect. It's almost off the rim. It's uh, so deflated. The irony being, of course, that it's the front of the car which has been making contact most of the time with Mercedes, and it's the back of the car with which he has a problem. So you are allowed to change your tyres if it's damaged. That's why that Pirelli has been changed. But otherwise, the other tyres will have to remain the same. So Karlwitz gets out. His teammate, Andreas Wirth, a 30-year-old from Heidelberg, is going to get in. Andreas finished sixth in the championship last year, even though he only did, only did 10 out of the 16 rounds due to his work commitment to the USA. Oh, <laughs> the team boss is not happy with the driver, is he? Very verbal. Yeah, that was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, Mercedes team boss there. Not very happy with the Mercedes team boss, but the boss of the Mercedes team, Team Zaxby there. Because Zaxby is the team boss. And he uh, made his feelings known there. We, we're trying to win a championship here, and you've been running into our car all day long. So he stormed down the pits. They are quite far apart in their positions in the pits as well, I noticed from this morning. So he's, uh, he's uh, really got on a mission there. He's taken quite a long walk to go and... Uh, let the driver know what he thinks of that. Daniel Karlwitz kept his helmet on, which was probably a good idea. Anyway, he still hasn't been penalised for it, really, so the team stay out and rejoins just in front of the number 80 car, which is still yet to come in. Now, championship contenders coming in. The number 36 car, Klaus Backler, who is second in the championship. His teammate is not second in the championship with him because he didn't do the first few rounds of the season, but he is mighty, mighty quick, Martin Ragginger, and with a point to prove after yesterday. Here are the top two then, number 80, the BMW, still leading the way. And still on board, Dominic Baum and the Austrian driver for the BMW Sports Trophy team, which is based in Osterschleben. Right behind him, though, is Nick Katzberg, absolutely loving himself in the car this weekend as a guest driver. Third, then, is Jack van Lagen in the number 25 Writer Engineering Lamborghini, but he's been delayed by the Corvette here as he tries to lap it. So Jack van Lagen is going to lose time, and right behind him is the number three Audi of Christy Jons. So Martin Ragging then, very frustrating end to his uh, race yesterday. That's uh, in full spin. Oh, he comes out just behind 
the uh, Audi as well, the number 24 Audi. So that's a, been a good stop as long as it's all to regulations because that Porsche is much closer to the Audi than it was before they came in. Now let's see what Marty can do now. But there's a chance that instead of being sixth, that car could be in fifth place before too long. So decent stop just going out right behind the number 24 MS Racing Audi, which is now being taken over by Florian Stoll. Pit window open for another couple of minutes. And they have to be within the time as well. You're a second out of the pit window, you're going to get a penalty. As the Lambo comes in, Jap van Lagen, Thomas Enger is going to get on board. The car excluded from the race in the end yesterday. As in comes the number 42 HP racing car, Bert Schneider is going to hand over to the team boss, Harry Prozik, who's got this new team form for this year. The Austrian driver based in Switzerland, the team. So yes, uh, after all the disappointment yesterday, could it be a good result for Thomas Enger? As I say, they um, were involved in the battle, this battle with the Porsche and the Mercedes. Uh, then they messed up their pit stops and got a penalty. But the reason they got excluded from the race was that they did not serve their stop-go penalty in time. They're supposed to serve it within a couple of laps, and I think they served it three or four laps after they'd been given the warning. So that is why uh, suddenly, we didn't really see it uh, because we were watching other battles towards the end of the race, but that is why uh, the car never finished the race yesterday. Uh, but out it goes, number 25, Jack Van Lagen, hands on hips. Good job, just lost that bit of time behind the Corvette just before he came in as he tried to get through the traffic. And could that cost them with the race being so close? Back out goes the number 42 car. So uh, that's uh, Lamborghini has rejoined in front of the number 24 Audi and also in front of the number 36 Porsche. So it looks like the kind of hell, hell station there. Martin Raggi are a bit closer to everybody than he was previously, I think. There's Jack van Lagen. A bit hot and bothered after a physical stint in the car. As our top two come in together, as they must do, really, because there's only 23 seconds left to go before the pit window closes. So our top two in together here. But to remind you that Nick Katzberg is going to hand over to Albert von Turner Taxis. And Albert, although he's a former champion, perhaps might not be quite so rapid as the man that's going to step into the number eight of BMW, Jens Klingman, did a good job in the race yesterday at the start. Gained four places in the early laps. And the former BMW champion, former Formula BMW champion, will get into the car. So, Albert Von Turner Taxis being strapped into the number 88 Lamborghini. He is royalty in Germany. The 12th Prince of the Turner Taxis region. An ancestor of his, Nenad von Taxis, was the postmaster general of the Holy Roman Empire back in the late 1500s. So, quite some heritage in his family. And he's a pretty rapid racing driver. Here they come then out together, and the BMW still just in the lead. So, status quo there between the top two, I'd say. They should come out ahead of the other Lamborghini by quite some time. Yes, there is the third place Lamborghini. Uh, the number three Audi is going to come out into fourth place as well by the looks of things. It's going to be wheel-to-wheel -wheel with the number 24 Audi as well, uh, with the number two car getting in the mix. So that's going to be very, very tight in and around fourth, fifth, sixth positions here. On board with Lucas Stotts in the number seven uh, Bentley, but he's down in 14th place. Where, uh, and 13th, just in front of him, is the number 21 car, Sebastian Ash. So they have not had a good pit window. They've dropped back out of the points. So this is definitely going to keep the championship alive. They're out of the points. So we're running in eighth place, and they're only in 13th position. Our team manager of car number 21 is under investigation. So the Zach Speed team are being investigated not for what's gone on on the track, but for what went on in the pit lane. There was verbals only. He let his uh, views be known. There certainly wasn't any physical... Uh, threat, I don't think. Just wanted to say his piece, but he's under investigation nonetheless. Could do without that headache, couldn't they? And this is the car that caused it all, really. There is uh, the team boss, Peter. He's uh, trying to keep his head down now at the moment, but we'll see what happens with this. I understand his frustration, that's for sure. Peter Zagowski, his father Eric Zagowski, set up the team, which ran Formula One cars during the 1980s. Oh, the car is out of the race now by the looks of things because 
of a technical, I guess. Nothing's come up on screen to say that they've been told to retire by the officials. So, again, I can only assume that's a technical drama after a good run through from the back of the field. So here's this battle on the fringes of the top six here. Fantastic stuff. We got into fourth place, Krista Johns, the number uh, three car. In fact, he's handed over to his teammate by now. He should have. And then the number two Audi is suddenly in the mix. Jordan Lee Pepper. There it is, the white and black car that's uh, had a really good uh, pit window. And Nicky Tim was running around in about 13th place, wasn't he, before the pit window opened. And suddenly that number two Audi has got right up there in the mix. It's got ahead of the championship contending number 36 Porsche and just behind the number 24 car, so it's in sixth place. So to recap the positions for you after the pit stops, and with 21 and three quarter minutes left to go, the number 80 car, the BMW, continues to lead the race. Second, the number 88 Lamborghini. Third, number 25 Lamborghini. Fourth, number three, the Audi. Fifth, the number 24 Audi. Sixth, another Audi, number two, the Jordan Lee Pepper car. Seventh is the number 36 Porsche. So that lost the place. Well, it looked like it had a good pit stop, but it actually lost the place down to seventh because of this fast stop from the Jordan Lee Pepper. Uh, Nicky Tim team, the number two Audi. Uh, eighth place is the number one car. Looking for some points here, Stefan Wackerbauer. Ninth place is the number 13 Corvette, which has now got behind the wheel the Czech driver, Remo Lips. And tenth place, uh, having been almost last at one point with an early stop go, is the number 100 Audi, the other MS Racing Audi, which should now have uh, Daniel Dobic on board, the Austrian driver. So that's had a, a good run. He's got in the points somehow. Uh, so all good. No signs of stop-go penalties for anybody yet. Team manager of car number 21 is now referred to the stewards. So I don't think the team will be penalised, but he might be having a rap on the knuckles from the officials for going up and saying his piece there. Tension, you can tell, is putting these people under some pressure. They put so much work into the preparation and running of these cars. They put their heart and soul into it. And when somebody else threatens to take away your championship when you've been working so hard for it, then uh, you can understand the frustration. So here is a points predictor. Sebastian Ash and Luca Ludwig will stay on 186 points. Dominic Bauman and Jens Klingman will move on to 156 because they lead the race as the safety car comes out as if there wasn't enough drama here. And then Klaus Backlor on 144 points, staying in championship contention at the moment. But uh, yeah, if it stays like this, Bauman and Klingman, if they win the race, are going to move up into second place in the championship, only 30 points behind. But I suppose with only 50 points to go, uh, with the two races and 25 points for a win, uh, it's still a tall order, but it's not impossible. They're doing all they can. You do need to bear in mind, though, that that BMW really, really struggled at the end of the race yesterday. Although I heard Dominic Bauman on the grid saying that he, they'd made some big changes to the setup of the car because it couldn't be any worse, he said, so we might as well try something different. Safety car deployed, possibly just because of this bodywork that's on circuit. It's a long wait now, the safety car, for everybody else. And here they come then. If anything, this is going to help those that struggle on tyres. If they can have a two or three laps uh, slower pace behind the safety car, chance for the tyres to live a bit longer, I suppose. And bearing in mind that people were really struggling only in the last sort of three or four laps of the race yesterday. It could make a difference, that. Very similar conditions to yesterday. Not quite as bright and sunny, but it's still breezy. And similar temperature. Warm enough for shades, just about. Although he's got, you know, a bit of body hair there to keep him warm as well. So that's another thing as well. The wind here can, uh, can be an issue because we're right by the North Sea coast and in amongst the sand dunes. And any wind can blow that sand onto the circuit. And if, even if it's only a tiny bit, when you're doing 200 kilometres an hour on slick tyres, it doesn't take much to make the car a bit slippy and slidey. So conditions can change. At the top of the circuit is where Martin Ragnar was telling me it's worse up there, up through turns 9 and 10, where it gets quite slippery. Quite high up there as well, in this very undulating circuit here at Zandvoort. Safety car staying out for the time being, but I've got a feeling it probably is going to come in at the end of this lap because they're just trying to move that bodywork. Yeah, as I say, the message comes on the screen, safety car in this lap. And that's just about as close a view as you want of uh, the wheel of the car there. Safety car in this lap. 
So nothing to lose in a sense for the man in this car, Sebastian Ash, the championship leader. He's 13th. Doesn't matter with your 11th, 12th, 13th or 20th, you're not going to score any points. If you can get in the top 10, he will get some points. A replay, which, ah, that's not a surprise really, is it? Put two and two together, I should have done that. It's the Bentley that lost the uh, bit of bodywork. That was the bit of bodywork that was hanging off and was patched up during the course of the pit stop on the number seven Bentley. So try as they might, the HTP team couldn't quite keep it on the car. But anyway, at least it's detached now and is out of the way. But it has bunched everybody up here. Albert von Turnen taxis in the number 88 Lamborghini in second place. Squirting down the accelerators, trying to stay with the race leader, Dominic Bowman. And will they have to let the teammates through as well? Thomas Enger trying to score points towards the championship. They're not really in contention for the title. Well, they're not in contention for the title. Although, Thomas Enger, he's going to have to be careful here to keep his own third place because he's under pressure from Florian Stolt in the orange number 24 MS Racing Audi. Let's see if he gets close on the running to turn one. He's pretty close, but not close enough to attack. So there he is looking back at him from the car of Thomas Enger, the former 3000 racer, GT1 racer. And the Czech driver keeps his position. There is Martin Ranginger. Can a safety car benefit him today? It was his undoing yesterday. They worked their way then out of Hugenholz, climbing up to Hunter Egg and then through this mightily, mightily quick section. Breathtaking the cars through here. Downhill, left, right and uphill, bottoming out. The cars skipping all over the shop as they try to keep their foot nailed, but it's absolutely flat out through there in these cars with all the grip that they have from the Pirelli tyres and the aerodynamics on the cars. Good aero on the Audi R8s as well. After a promising start to the weekend and a fourth place finish yesterday, the Bentleys are struggling now at the back of the field. Tom Dillman trying to have a go. Look at the car that he's overtaking, dropping back further still now. The championship leaders, rather than going forwards, they're going backwards. So Sebastian Ash, you've got to assume, has got some sort of technical problem here because they are normally not at the back of the field, but at the front of the field. And he is struggling. So Sebastian Ash at the back of the field. Luca Ludwig looks on, looking a bit fed up here. Well, he did say yesterday it could all change tomorrow. He certainly wasn't counting his chickens. And he was dead right. So they're not going to score any points. And instead of wrapping up the championship, they still have a decent lead. But it could only be a 30-point lead in the championship now. And that BMW still leading the way and looking to move on to 156 points, just 30 behind. Get a replay now of that, uh, well, not really an incident, but just that pass, the Bentley going through. Number seven car driven by Lucas Stoltz, which has had its own problems today, getting ahead of Sebastian Ash and quite easily which suggests the Mercedes is, is down on power. I think too early for it to have some sort of tyre problem. So I think that's uh, a technical gremlin, which they've not had many this year. It's been a very reliable car this season. Only one race that the car hasn't finished in the points. That was the second race at the Saxon Ring. A magnificent start to the season with podiums in three of the first four races. A couple of wins in the first half of the season. Record score at the halfway mark. And then difficulties getting results together at the Nürburgring and Saxon Ring put them under a bit of pressure coming into this weekend. Then it all went absolutely beautifully for them yesterday. They took the win, their championship rivals struggled, and then it's gone back to the downbeat aspect of their season again now. So it's going to be a bit of a dig-in job as the championship goes down to the wire in the final weekend at Hockenheim. Here comes the number one car. It's going well here, Stefan Wackerbauer. They've got their first win of the season, he and Kelvin van der Linde at the Saxon ring, but boom! Oh, contact there with the number 100 Audi, which just went off the track over the kerbs and just nerfed it through. So aggressive stuff there from Daniel Dobitz, the Austrian driver. He gets through, but it was definitely not without contact, was it? Uh, car number 25, by the way, is under investigation for the safety car restart. And now, funnily enough, incident between these two cars under investigation. Well, whether it was intentional, I don't know, but he, Either way, he couldn't slow the car down in time, could he? And the only way he could get through was by rubbing shoulders with the Stefan Wackerbauer car, which was just in the way there, as far as he was concerned. So they switch around, but that incident is under investigation. A couple of quick cars that you wouldn't expect at the back of the field here. Sebastian Ash not giving in, even though he's at the back of the field and likely to score points. 
running around in 15th place. I suppose, though, they only take one or two retirements, one or two incidents, and they might just sneak a 10th place. So it's worth staying out there if the car can continue to run. But look at the lead that the BMW has. It's absolutely miles clear now at the head of the field. The two Lamborghinis are nose to tell, but Albert Von Turner Taxis is doing a solid job here. He's keeping Thomas Enger behind him. They're second and third. And then fourth and uh, fifth, we've got the two Audis. Florian Stoll, number 24, and Jordan Lee Pepper in fifth place. Now, number 100. Yes, he's been told by the officials, it's come up on the screen, you've got to give the place back. So that comes over the radio, and that is what he does. He gives the place back to the number one car of uh, Wackerbauer. So that changes again. That's for eighth place points, of course, up for, the, up for grabs. So up into sixth place on the road now is Martin Ragginger in the Porsche. He'll get points for fifth place, though, because one of the cars ahead of it is a guest car. Uh, now, trying to still get in on the action here is Sebastian Ash trying to get past this uh, number eight Bentley, which in turn is trying to get past Rahel Frey here. Rahel down in 13th place, having been on the podium yesterday. The Audi's having the go at the Lamborghini, trying to go around the outside of it. That's a brave move. It's not quite going to work, though. On board now with Florian Stoll. Big effort, but it didn't quite pay off, and he's having to close the door to defend his own position, but he doesn't do it because through comes charging the number two car of Jordan Lee Pepper. Good move, that, from the young South African driver in his first season of GT racing, and he went through, took his opportunity. Look at Martin Ragginger as well, looking menacing there in the Porsche. He was mighty through this section of the course in qualifying. Let's see what he can do here. But, yeah, trying to go around the outside into Tarzan, and then he lost momentum out of the corner, and Jordan Lee Pepper in a corner where you don't normally see overtaking it. Pulled one off, a beauty through Gerlach and then into the chicane at Hugenholz. Fantastic bit of driving, that. Tiny bit of contact, but you don't get many opportunities at Zandvoort, and he took it with both hands. Car 25 will be reported to the stewards, is the next uh, message to come up on the screen. So that's the Thomas Enger car, which is second. Hmm. Sure, what that's about. Well, it was under investigation for the safety car restart, wasn't it? So possibly it's to do with that. But anyway, no penalty has been applied as yet. Car which runs in second place. There it is. And then third, fourth, fifth, and sixth all together. So yeah, even though they're sixth, uh, Klaus Backler and Martin Ragger will pick up points for fifth. So 144 they'll be on. But still, they're going to be 44 points behind and only 50 points up for grabs. So they're in in there still, but only just about, as we see a replay on board with Sebastian Nash finally getting past the Bentley here. This is a case of just trying to squeeze a few positions and nick a, a championship point, because you know what? This season, one point might be the difference between the championship title and the runner-up spot. So you've got to keep going, don't give up. No point calling it a day. So what could he do? 14th now he is. Next target, Rahel Frey in the Audi. He still hasn't shaken off the Bentley there of uh, young Clemens Schmidt, the number eight car. Clemens, the 25 year old, ex Porsche racer, the GT3 uh, Cup champion in the Middle East Porsche GT3 Championship two years ago, and uh, three years ago, in fact, he won it twice that championship. Porsche Carrera Cup racer in recent times. And there is the uh, number 42 at uh, Mercedes. Oh, a bit of wheel banging there as well from the number seven Bentley, getting past then. The number three Audi of Andreas Weishaupt. Andreas, that's just on the fringe of the top ten. Andreas shuffled down the order, but he still leads the gentleman's class in ninth place where he was yesterday. His nearest rival is the number 13 Corvette, which has the slightly rusty uh, Remo lips behind the wheel. So ninth and twelfth, the top two in the gentleman's category. The other category uh, car is the Nissan, which is back in 17th place, the number 23 car. So that's out of the uh, action, really. Eight minutes off the race to go. It's been very, very lively indeed. Now, look, we've got the top two of the gentlemen's trophy together all of a sudden. The number three car is struggling. The number 13 car is trying to have a go for the lead of the class and gets alongside but has to back off out of the move. Then the Audi runs wide. Two wheels on the kerb and through goes the blue Corvette at the hands of Remo Lips to move up into position and into the class lead. A very important move, that. And it's very tight, you know, the gentlemen's trophy because at the start of the weekend, we had the uh, number 22 Nissan, the MRS GT Racing Nissan of Florian Stoltz and Dominic Joost in the mix. 
uh, and leading that gentleman's trophy championship for quite some way but they crashed in free practice and won't score any points this weekend you count your best 12 from 16 results but they've already dropped four scores so they're going to have to count today as one of their scores and that's going to make it tight so if um, if lips and bath were to have won this race today they would have tied on points, but that might not happen now with this uh, good performance from uh, Remo Lips getting through. Said he was going to attack today, said he wasn't very happy with the way he drove yesterday. And uh, so there he goes, he's made the place up. And now Q forming, and through comes the number eight Bentley to gain a place. Clement Schmidt picking up the position. The Audi now has got two very quick uh, cars behind it. Very quick drivers as well, Philip Leipel, number 16, who was trying to attack and also defend because Philip Geipel has got the championship leader, Sebastian Ash, behind him. The 2012 champion just trying to scramble some points here. Six and a half minutes to go. Here comes the Audi, the number 16 Audi, wheel to wheel, nose in front. Down it goes into the chicane and gains the place. Sebastian Ash is a bit too far back, so he'll have to sit tight on the way through Hans Ernst and maybe wait for an opportunity coming out of this final turn and getting a good run, which is crucial out of this turn, down towards Tarzan. So third gear around that corner, accelerate, get on the throttle as quickly as you can. Drivers from the first stint watching on now. And right, Sebastian Ash, he's going to have a go, is he? Look at him in the background, thinks about it, can't do it. Because I think he's lacking power in that car. It's relatively quick, but it's nowhere near as quick as it normally is. And just didn't have the grunt in the straight line there to be able to get past the gentleman driver. So, still stuck in 15th place, through they come. There's no dramas at the head of the field. We've got our race leader still a country mile clear. Although, he lost a, yeah, hang on, he lost a second on the last lap to Thomas Enger. Uh, so, is this the uh, repeat of yesterday? Is that number 80 BMW struggling on its tyres again? The BMW Sports Trophy team, it lost four places in the last two laps yesterday, and from 6th to 10th. There's a similar story about to happen here. The car really, really went off the ball for the last uh, three, four minutes of the race, and it cost them big style. Could it cost them a win here? They've got to hang on to this. I mean, if they finish second, they'll still be in the championship fight, but they need every single point they can get. They desperately want their fourth win of the season. Dominic Van did a good, solid job at the start of the race. Jens Klingman has now got to nurse the car home, but also be quick enough to defend from Thomas Enger. Then we've got these two cars battling over the final podium position. The number 88 car being driven by Albert von Turn and Taxi is doing a good job. He's only been out once or twice in the championship this season, but he's under pressure from Jordan Lee Pepper, who would like his first ever podium in this championship if he could possibly do that. But he's also got to keep an eye on his mirrors because look at the orange number 24 Audi of Florian Stoll, the MS Racing car twitching under acceleration there on these tyres, which are beginning to go off now. It's Jordan Lee Pepper following each other nose to tail on the wet run through Gerlach and then into the Hugenholtz corner through this left hander get a good run here because it's uphill now and you nail it you go up through the six speed sequential gearbox and you do not come off that throttle until you get to the braking zone for the corner at the top of the hill at uh, Schleibach you see the car's just dancing there one wheel lifting off the tarmac easy to outbreak yourself here as all the weight is transferred over the front of the car and the back end goes light as you brake that downhill run into a very quick braking zone for the, four, the uh, fourth gear Tarzan corner. Now we look back at Thomas Enger, who is much, much closer than he was a couple of laps ago. Now you can see how much he's been catching at the race leader. And Jens Klingman is going to have to cling on for three and a half minutes. But the way he's been caught here, it's going to be tough. Yep, Van Lagen won two races here last year with a different uh, car and a different teammate. Can he? win another one here in his home country did a good solid job in the first part of the race Thomas Enger is absolutely flying though after the BMW and is that a case of Jack van Lagen who just had a sort of steady run in third place looking after the tyres and making sure that he gave Thomas Enger the perfect car to attack with in the last part of the race three minutes to go there's going to be a couple of laps left in this race and we've got just about half a second between the top two on the brakes they go into Tarzan it could not be closer at the end of this race Lamborghini have already had a couple of wins this season. Could they get their third win or could it be a fourth win for BMW? It's going to be hard work this because he's walking wounded with tyres surely that have gone off now on that BMW. It's been eating the tyres. 
but it's not easy to pass here. Can he cling on? Writer Engineering, eyes wide. Look at the screens, look at the monitors, and spur their man, Thomas Enger on. Looking back at him now, lights ablaze. Not quite close enough to attack yet, but he'll wait for his moment, and he will surely have a go if he gets half a chance. Nervous times for everybody else watching there at the pit wall. Edgy your seat stuff, this. And the penultimate weekend of the season. Great racing we've had here at Sandvoort. Yesterday was really good. Today has been even better. And we're going to have a grandstand finish here between the top two. Couple of minutes to go. Thomas Enger makes his move, gets on the throttle. He goes on board with him now. He gets alongside the BMW. He's on the outside line, but he'll now try and cut back to the inside. He gets on the throttle. He's got a better car underneath him at the moment. He's got better grip. And now he runs alongside again. Can he get through? He knows he's in front. It's a left hander coming up. They hit their brakes at the last possible moment. And around the outside he goes on the way to the chicane. And we got a new race leader. Thomas Enger goes through. Fantastic stuff there with just about a lap but a half to go, less than that. The team cheers, high fives for Jan van Lagen. They are in the lead of the race. Nick Katzberg enjoying that as well. His teammate next to him, Albert von Turner Taxis, could get another podium for the team if he can hang on to third place from Jordan Lee Pepper. Oh, no, 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 a spin, a spin for our gentleman trophy leader, the number 13 car, Remo Lips. Whether it's a spin or somebody sent him around, I'm not sure. But it doesn't look like a mechanical, does it, the way the car is pointed? So that might well mean that the number three car is going to get the points again here. Andreas Weishaupt and Chris de Jons and pick up the points for the gentleman's trophy, which could be absolutely crucial for their charge on that championship. Because that, I reckon, would put them level on points with the uh, Nissan pairing. Final lap of the race. Look how much Thomas Enger has left behind that BMW. It's just run out of grip. But they're still going to finish second. And they are still going to be in the championship fight here and in second place. So is that car, the Porsche. But it's still looking very strong, even though they're not going to score points today for Sebastian Asch and Luka Ludwig. That car, incidentally, has made a bit of ground up, but it's 12th and still out of the points. And we're on the final lap of the race now. So the car stranded, it's not really in the way there, though the yellow flags will warn the drivers that something is amiss. Uh, but there's no need to bring the safety car out because the flag is being readied for the end of what's been an absolutely brilliant race here at Zandvoort. And a great drive by Thomas Enger. And in no small measure of praise should go to his teammate as well, Jan van Lagen. Might not have had the key moment of the race, but he set it up, didn't he, for his teammate? And that's what it's about in team racing. It's about looking after the car, looking after the tyres, and giving yourself a chance in the last 10, 15 minutes of the race when it really, really matters. And although he won't have taken the glory, Jack van Lagen has played his part in this race. But it is Thomas Enger that will take the chequered flag. Writer Engineering with their 22nd win in the ADAC GT Masters Championship. Fantastic stuff. Keeping second place and in the championship fight then. Crossing the line is the number 80 BMW of Jens Klingman. And third place for Albert von Turner Taxis. He did really well there up against some strong pressure from Jordan Lee Pepper who takes his joint best result of the season. Here's the championship leader. It's not where he wanted to be at the end of the race, though. They could have won the title today. They haven't. They're going to go to Hockenheim with a big points lead, but not an unassailable one. There's Jan van Lagen, who, with all the wins in his career, still celebrates everyone as if it was his first. And uh, they're, well, a fairly satisfied, I think, uh, BMW team. Dominic Bamberg, he drove really well, led the race early on. They led most of that race, but they just ran out of tyres at the end. It wasn't as uh, a big a drop-off as it was yesterday, though, and they had a big enough lead to only lose one place, but it's always frustrating when the place you lose is the win. So three wins rather than four, but they're still in the championship fight. Fourth place to Jordan Lee Pepe, he drove uh, really well as well. You think when that car started, Nicky Tim was almost at the back of the field. He got the car up into the midfield. The team did a fabulous job in the pit stop window. They called it dead right, and they gained half a dozen places and uh, very nearly took a podium finish. Fourth place goes to the number 24 Audi. Good solid weekend for Florian Stoll and Mark Mar Mar Singh because they had a, a second place finish yesterday and a fifth today. And then sixth place where they started for Martin Ragginger and Klaus Backler. They're just about still in championship contention but only just. I'll pick up points for fifth because of that guest car, uh, which finished third, but uh, still a very disappointing weekend, what might have been when they got pole position 
on Friday. Seventh place, a good drive this as well from the other MS Racing Audi, the number 100 Audi, which was at the back of the field after an early stop go. And uh, Daniel Dobich and Ed Sandstrom getting up to seventh place as we see that replay of that move for the lead of the race. It was around the outside on the way to Hans Ernst corner into the chicane. And it was all about really the extra traction that the Lamborghini was able to get down as the Gallardo came out of turn 10 and onto the back straight, hit the brakes at about 75, 80 metres before the corner and just braved it out around the outside. Jens did everything he could, Jens Klingman, to fight the position, but he did so fairly, gave room to Thomas Enger. And so Thomas Enger takes a fantastic victory. His first victory uh, of the season since the very first race of the season, uh, since early on in the season at the Red Bull Ring. very first race of the season oh, sorry the second weekend of the season where they had a second and a third place for the first and the second place finish so Thomas it's been a few months but he will take the race victory brings the car in after enjoying his slowing down lap and Thomas is a man who likes to celebrate and there'll be a huge smile on his face when he gets out of that car shrug this off as, as if it's nothing. He's going to savour every moment of this. There's Jan van Nagen. And there is Thomas out of the car. <laughs> Big man hug. Almost wrestles him onto the top of the car. <laughs> These two enjoy their racing. Great pair of drivers as well. Thomas Enger. He had a very short-lived Formula One career. It was a fantastic single-seater racing in his time. His career hasn't been without controversy with one thing or another. But there's no doubting his talent. And uh, great drive that. And well done to the BMW pairing as well. Much better end to the race than yesterday when they just about held on to 10th place. So well done to Jens Klingman and Dominic Bauman in second place. And Albert von Turnen Taxis comes home in third place with another driver that's enjoyed himself this weekend, Nick Katzberg. Uh, it's Dominic Bauman joining uh, Dominic Bauman and uh, his teammate Jens Klingman looking fairly satisfied even though they just lost out on the uh, the race win with a lap, was it? A lap and a quarter to go. So the top three cars parked up there, at BMW and two Lamborghinis. There's Thomas Enger to the left there, the black race suit. Albert von Turner Taxi is looking well pleased as well there, far left of the picture as a guest driver to get to third place. So fantastic stuff. And some very, very happy drivers there. Posing. Big big crowd here this weekend, lots of media presence. It's a well-supported championship. We've got the F3 Masters here as well, the 25th running of that to come uh, later on in the weekend. But they've uh, made it free entry for everybody this weekend here at Zandvoort. So there's a big, big crowd. It was certainly very busy in the pit walk about an hour before the race started. The GT Masters drivers being uh, very popular indeed. Certainly uh, the, the most popular garage was probably the championship leading garage of the Zach Speed Mercedes team, Sebastian Ash and Luca Ludwig. But the other really popular garage was uh, the uh, team of uh, the gentleman drivers, uh, Sven Barth and uh, his teammate, getting lots and lots of attention. Remo Lips, his teammate, as I say, has been away for a few weeks and uh, got a big crowd around them and they were getting the kids in the cars, taking photos. Remo really, uh, really good with the, the, the fans and the spectators, which was great to see drivers giving up their time to give something back to the fans. So good to see Bath and Lips enjoying themselves, but they didn't enjoy themselves at the end of that race, did they, with that spin out that very late on when they just got into the lead as well of the gentleman's class. So victory going to Christa Jons and Andres Weishaupt, who started on the front row of the grid. Very good first stint from Christa Jons. As I say, I think that will get them up into the joint championship lead for the gentleman's trophy as well. So that's going to be down to the wire, absolutely, when we go to Hockenheim. So lots of different winners uh, so far this year. Sebastian Ash, Luca Ludwig have taken three wins. Klaus Backler, uh, just the one winner right at the start of the season, the first race of the championship. They've had six poles this year and they've not been able to convert one of them into a race win. When they did win, it was from second on the grid. Dominic Bowen and Jens Klingman, as I've said, have had three wins this season. Thomas Engers now had a couple of wins. Lucas Stotz took a win in the Bentley early on in the season at uh, Oschersleben. Mark Bersengen and Florian Stoll also won a race recently at the Nürburgring. 
and so did uh, the other Audi, or their teammates, Daniel Dobbich and Ed Sandstrom. So the wins have been really spread out. There's been lots of different driver pairings taking victories in the championship, and it's been one of the most competitive in the uh, championship's history so far. So we are set for a showdown at Hockenheim in a couple of weeks' time. Two races to go in the championship. And yes, that's how we'll be feeling when we go on the grid for that final round. A bit nervous, lots of anticipation, lots to think about for Sebastian Ash and Luca Ludwig. It's been a half good weekend, at least. At least they've got a win again. And they've certainly picked up more points, even though they didn't score today. They've picked up more points today than they have in the last four races, Sebastian Ash and Luca Ludwig. So if you want to put a positive spin on it, you know, in the four races before this weekend, they only mustered 13 points. And this weekend, they've got 25. So it's on the up. It's just disappointing that they couldn't quite seal the deal uh, with a result here. Although it was always going to be tough from ninth on the grid, even if they'd finished fifth or sixth, I think. Here we go again. Action replay. <laughs> Playing up to the cameras. All the Lamborghini drivers. Thomas Enger, Nick Katzberg, Albert von Turnen taxis and Jap van Lagen. So the teams, the crowd gathered ready for the podium. Absolutely brilliant race that was. And while it might not be the easiest circuit to overtake on here at Zandvoort, people were having a go and we saw some close racing. We saw some really good work in the pits today. Not one team today uh, was given a penalty for short stopping. It was you know, pretty abundant yesterday for maybe five teams, I think, got a penalty. But today they were spot on. And some teams did a really, really good job. Certainly the, the team that seemed to make up the most ground in that pit stop window were Christian Abt Racing. Christian Abt, the former uh, DTM racer and former champion of this category, running a team now. And Jordan Lee Pepper and Nicky Tim have got a fourth place finish from 18th on the grid. Some good driving, but really it was the, the strategy, the pit stop, the teamwork that got them there. If you want to put another positive spin on it as well for Sebastian Ash and Luca Ludwig, something I didn't mention earlier in the race and that we only found out about after the race yesterday was, you know, they could have walked away here with no points because yesterday when the car went on the grid, the Mercedes, it had a drive shaft problem, had a broken drive shaft on the way to the grid and they didn't think they were even going to start the race yesterday. The team did a brilliant job. They changed the drive shaft in 20 minutes flat. The car started the race and of course they ended up winning the race. So, you know, it's not been an ideal weekend, but it could have been a lot worse. So here's a look at the championship. They still lead the championship. 186 points for Ash and Ludwig. 149 for Bauman and Klingman. So 37 points behind with 50 points up for grabs. Tall order. Klaus Backler on 148. Still just about has a mathematical chance, but he'll need to win both races and hope that Ash and Ludwig and Bauman and Klingman have disasters, really. And Harry Prozik is there in fourth place in the championship, uh, running his new team this season. So I think he'll be pretty satisfied with the way uh, the 2015 season has gone. Although it wasn't a great race today for him and his teammate Bernd Schneider. They were stuck out of the points for the whole race, really. 